Hey guys, it's Slushy. So in spirit of the season, I've decided to do a double feature movie review slash comparison. I'm just going to call it double feature movie review, but uh, today we're going to be looking at the 1978 John Carpenter classic and the 2007 Rob Zombie remake of the 19, 1978 classic. Um, I have some interesting opinions, so I figured why not make this video. Um, so let's just get it started right away. I don't actually have my copy of the original Halloween. I lent it to a friend. Uh, I'll probably be getting it back soon. But uh, for now, yeah. So I'm gonna talk about Halloween 1978 first, then I'm gonna get to this. Um, so the things that I love about the 1978 movie. I like this, I really love the score. The score is one of the shining points. Everyone always talks about the score. It's really memorable. Uh, Nick Castle as Michael Myers was awesome. He has a sense of realism to him, uh, while also just being creepy. You know, there's nothing he really does in the movie that I couldn't do. You know, anybody can do what he does in that movie. Some of it, you know, is like, oh, really? He got stabbed in the neck. You know, he got shot. You know, it depends on where you got shot. It depends on where, where you get stabbed. You know, she could have missed a vital organ. He could have missed a vital organ shooting him and simply just didn't even hurt him. Or the bullet could have missed. You don't actually see the bullet go into him. Until, you know, they get in the room and he's... And they get shot off the balcony. Uh, he could very easily survive that. To me, uh, that that's all cool stuff. And I like how he escapes. It's a very funny, almost cheesy way to escape. But it's uh, a decent way. The fact that he drives... Uh, makes a lot of sense, actually. And I'll talk about... I'll explain something about the 2009... 2007 remake that I don't care for, but uh, I love that he drives off. That's awesome. I love that he just gets in the car and just pulls off. Uh, logically, uh, I think it works. You know, driving 100 miles versus walking 100 miles. Um, anyways, <laughs> yeah, I love a lot of things about this. John Carpenter, uh, Dean Cundey's cinematography for this. I think he was also involved with Jurassic Park's uh, franchise, but uh, he did the cinematography for this for both the first movie, the second one, and the third one. Uh, and he has a, such a cool cinematography to it. I love that he, uh, the way that Michael Myers is mostly seen, you know, in the dark. You know, you don't really see him full on. There's a couple of parts whenever you see him driving down the street where Lori, Annie, and Linda are walking, and you see him standing there outside the school. But besides that, and I, by, by the bush, but other than that, really, uh, you don't really see too much of him in, in his face, full body, uh, until dark. And even then, when you see him, it's like still it, almost in the shadow, which is cool. And I love that. They kind of have a sense of uh, mystery to him. He's a very mysterious character in the first one. And I love that about him. So that is my plus sides for this movie. Now let me get to my negatives. There's a negative with every movie. Don't think I'm harping on it, because I love this movie, Beyond Words. Uh, the biggest negative I have. He goes to a mechanic, right? He gets the jumpsuit. It's so... Rob Zombie also said he had a problem with this, and I have to agree with him on this. Why is the jumpsuit so clean? You know, if you're unless you're just then starting work, your jumpsuit should not be freaking pristine. The guy's... Like, in his jumpsuit is, like, damn near clean, like he just went to the laundromat or something. We just got it washed. It's like, what the hell? It would all depend on the circumstance. Like, you know, if it is new, what time of day is it? You know, has he already just started work? Because even if you barely started, a mechanic's job is very messy, and it would it would get grime, grease, and stuff off it. And I don't even know if that would come off in the shower or nothing. Not the shower and the wash. But uh, that's my all. Honestly, to God, that's my only problem with that movie. The dialogue is so it's so 1970. Which makes this movie even cooler, because it's from that time, so you have to watch this, and you can't be like, you know, that doesn't sound how we talk, you know, because it's back then. You have to look in a different way. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's my only downside to this movie. Uh, I love everything about it, but now, let's get to the 2007 remake by Rob Zombie, Evil Has a Destiny. It does. It sure does, doesn't it? Uh, so in this movie, Rob Zombie goes with an approach where he explains Michael Myers. In the original, obviously, we know that he doesn't get explained. We have no idea why he murdered uh, his sister. He just went berserk. He, it seems that he is raised in a normal family, and then just one night just loses his crap and just kills 
kills his uh, sister. This movie is a lot more brutal. That's, I feel like that's the only thing Rob Zombie tried to do. He didn't really make a... They said that he made an original movie. To me, the only thing original about this is he made it more brutal. Okay? He made there more kills in the first part of the movie. And that all plays into the whole brutal part of it. Uh, he, he explained Michael Myers. That's all that's really original. He explained who Michael Myers was, what it was, 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 which takes away from the mystique of Michael Myers. It just makes him just this generic serial killer guy. And to me, that's less scarier than a guy that I don't know nothing about that just went fucking crazy. No one knows, you know, why he did it. In this movie, it's like he's raised in a broken home and his stepdad is a piece of junk that sits on the couch and just verbally and physically abuses him. Uh, his mom's a, a stripper. You know, everything that could be wrong with this family is. <laughs> they got he's, he's living in a bad house a very bad house and it just i guess it causes him to go crazy if he wasn't crazy already because you know he's killing animals and taking pictures of them like he's like to admire them or something it shows that he's like loony he's crazy in the head and i think the only the one good thing i can't say out of this whole explaining him is that they show that he's at least in this version uh, and it's only for this version. I'm not comparing it to the original in a sense, but uh, that they he kind of actually feels like a real life serial killer in that sense. You know how uh, most serial killers start off doing stuff like this. They just uh, kill animals. But then again, in the original, you don't really get an aspect of that. We don't see him for a little bit of a period as a young boy. Uh, and personally, like I said, I enjoy that more, not knowing who he is. But for this movie, I think seeing him as like getting a little bit of a glimpse into his life at least in the rob zombie movie is pretty cool but i would never want to go back on the original and say john get out there film some scenes as a with michael as a kid because that's not what i would want in the original i'd like like it the way it is but uh explaining that keeping that into account they did make michael myers feel like he's a actual you know serial killer but that's like i said a generic serial killer just someone like if i was just grabbed a knife and just started stabbing people. That's exactly probably how it would look, just like this. And it's strange. He also says that he wanted to make Michael Myers normal. Yet in in the theatrical release of this movie, Michael breaks the the, the chains that he's cuffed to, breaks them, kills the guards. I think he even gets shot by a shotgun. It doesn't stop. And to me, that's not realistic at all. We never see Michael Myers do something so crazy as that. He gets shot six times. Granted. Uh, and falls off the balcony he gets stabbed in the eye with a coat hanger and stabbed in the chest or something with the knife but getting shot in close range with a shotgun and it doesn't do anything? It doesn't stop him? He's still going for you? No no, unless you want to call that adrenaline I don't know what you want to call that to me that's just unreal uh, and that's one thing I don't like about this but this is uh, the, um, the director's cut so uh, the way he escapes in this one is uh, even worse than the uh, theatrical cut, but it makes, I guess it makes a little bit more sense and it does show more of a realistic Michael Myers. These two guys come in with this girl, they rape her. Weird scene, I hate that part of the movie. Doesn't add anything. Just gives a, re- a way for Michael Myers to just walk free. <coughs> and he kills the guards and that's kills the guys who came in to rape the girl doesn't i think he leaves the girl alone i'm not sure he never see her again so who knows uh but then he just walks out and kill pretty much kills everyone throughout the hospital or the sanitarium and you know it's that's a lot better it's way better of a way for him to escape than killing the guard if he wanted to go with a realistic approach he should have went with that but cut out the rape scene why why can't we just have those guys come in there just mess with them and try to antagonize them without the girl do we need her in there what does that add i don't ah hate that stupid stupid addition to the movie just added runtime that we didn't need her him and the, them in the background just with the girl it's ah, just weird i hate that in horror movies when they're just like hey well we don't have nothing sex scene rape scene throw it in there or brutal kill because we can't come up with anything else creative but um loomis in this movie is also cool because it's not Donald Pleasant, so uh, it'll never, no one will ever take Donald Pleasant's place. He'll always be known as Loomis. No one else. Even that new guy in the movie who kind of has like a Loomis type of feel, Dr. Sartain, 
uh, spoiler alert, uh, he, uh, no one will ever complain, never, nobody will ever compete to Donald Pleasance as, uh, Dr. Loomis, or as a doctor figure for Michael Myers, it just won't work. He's the only one, so there's almost no point to even have a doctor for Michael Myers, just, you know, give up on that. But, uh, he's okay, you know. I like the fact that he takes advantage of the whole popularity of the whole murders of Michael Myers, and he kind of, uh, he monetizes the whole event and, you know, kind of makes a book and capitalizes the crap off of it, and I think, honestly, most doctors would do the same. Old Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis, I don't think he would. Obviously, he didn't, uh, but, uh, you know, I think that he, uh, this is a cool version of Loomis, just not better than Donald Pleasant's Loomis, but I like the approach to him. It's original, I suppose. Um, I'm trying to think of anything, uh, good, anything good I can really say. The kills are cool. They're brutal. If you like brutal kills, this is a good movie. The ha Rob Zombie Halloween 2 is also very brutal, more brutal than this movie, which is a surprise. Uh... It seems like they really just let him have at it. They didn't care what the hell he did with it. They're just like, here's Halloween. Have fun. Do whatever you want. And he did. He definitely did. Especially in Halloween 2. But he definitely did what he wanted to. And I don't know. Yeah, I have mixed feelings about this. It's definitely not my favorite Halloween. This is like almost bottom of the list for me. Uh, it's not terrible. It's very well shot in film. It's just... Mm, I, the backstory. Why? Why did we need a backstory? Why? Come on. Uh, almost in a sense, it doesn't even feel like a remake. Uh, I don't know. It, I don't know if reboot means the same, but it seems like they didn't really... They took some stuff from the original, but they didn't really... They warped it. They warped it completely and made it into some bizarro thing. It's like... It's not what you would remember. Like, if you watch the original Halloween and you watch this, you may see a couple of scenes that it's like, hey, oh, I remember that. But everything else is just like, what the hell? What is this? Like, the first 50 minutes is him as a kid. The last 50 minutes of him is him as an adult, which is more so like the ones from the original. But... What? Why? Uh, but for me, obviously, 1978's John Carpenter's Halloween is a... A gem. It's amazing. This, if I had, a, I'll give the John Carpenter movie a rating. Uh, if I gotta give John Carpenter's movie a rating, I gotta give it a, I give it a, a ten out of ten for its time. And so you gotta look at it like that. For its time, that's a ten out of ten. Nowadays, film wise, I'd probably give it a nine out of ten. There's not a lot of blood in that movie, which is you know what they were going for. Uh, and I like that they didn't over put blood in there, like this movie. Uh, but, uh, they did a lot of things great, and the only reason I give it a 9 out of 10 is simply for the fact, uh, that, um, you know, the dialogue. The dialogue just, to me, didn't do it. It's very, uh, it's very drab dialogue. It's like they just put it in there just to have dialogue. Like, they didn't actually, you know, they, it's, I don't know how to describe it, you know? It just didn't have a unique, cool sound to it. It doesn't sound like conversations people would actually have. Oh, you've scared another one away. You know, it just didn't sound good. You know, it didn't sound mutual. They didn't sound like they really were excited to make this movie. It sounds like they were like, well, they were paid to do it, obviously. But, uh, and it's a very low-budget movie, but they didn't have any energy, is what I'm trying to say. It just didn't have any emotion, really. They just said it without any emotion. And that's one thing that is a setback for the dialogue of that movie. And the only... I think I forgot to mention that earlier. I know I said the dialogue, or the they were cheesy, but... Uh, yeah, I do not like that, but that's the only reason that's a 9 out of 10. Uh, and a 10 out of 10 for its time, because cheesy back then was just the thing. You know, every movie pretty much had the same dialogue, because I guess that's just how they wanted to make them. So back then, it would be, it would probably be a 10 out of 10. This movie, I gotta give it a 7 out of 10. I don't like the fact that they just threw in a bunch of brutal kills. I don't like the fact that they explained everything about Michael Myers. They, left, they leave nothing to secret. Um... Uh, I, it's damn near close to a six for me because of all that. But is it well shot? Yeah. The cinematography is good. It doesn't feel old homely like the original. Uh, 
it's very, very, very Rob Zombie. And if you don't like Rob Zombie, you will not like Halloween. It's simple. You know, if you're a Halloween fan and you you don't you don't like Rob Zombie, do, I, I mean, I recommend you watch it. Once. But you, there's a good chance you probably won't enjoy it because it's it's very, very Rob Zombie, which means brutal, tons of language that just doesn't fit in a Halloween movie. That's another thing I forgot to mention that was bad is the language. God, it sucks. Every five seconds, it's another cuss word. The nudity in this movie, you know, it's nudity in a horror movie. It's it's gonna happen. Uh, they overdo it. Uh, they especially have Danielle Harris, who played Jamie uh, Jamie Lloyd in Halloween Four and Five. They have her nude in this movie. What? You can't do that to one of the Halloween's face. The face, one of the faces of Halloween. You can't do that. To me, that's just wrong. And it's, it's almost offensive to a degree. And I hate that he did that. I really hate that. Uh, that really pisses me off that he did that. Uh, but other than that, it's a, it's a 7 out of 10. It's not a hard 7. Very, very, very soft. Uh, but, you know, it's not a terrible movie. It's not as bad as it could have been. There's guaranteed that there could have been a worse Halloween movie. But, you know, it's just not what it could have been, you know. But, uh... Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you guys agree. If not, leave me your opinion. Did you like the remake better? Uh, did you, uh, do we have the same opinion? Do we differ in opinions? Just let me know down below. And uh, hit like, subscribe, and tell your friends about the channel. We're growing. We're doing our thing. And it's all because of you guys. So, uh, yeah. See you in the next one. Happy early Halloween. Mwahaha.